Hey, this is Anthony from Tech Talk with Tony, and today we're going to go over the EVGA GeForce GTX 580 Classified Ultra 3 gig model that came out in late 2011. So this card has a base clock of 900 megahertz on the core, 4,212 megahertz on the memory, 512 CUDA cores. It uses PCI Express 2.0 bus, has 3,072 megabytes or 3 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory with a 384-bit memory bus. It also has a memory bandwidth of 202 gigabytes per second. It supports two-way, three-way, and four-way SLI, dual-link HDCP capable. Uh, also has HDMI 1.4a, Microsoft DirectX 11 support, Windows 7 support, NVIDIA 3D Vision Surround ready, something that's not really used anymore, NVIDIA CUDA technology with OpenCL support, PhysX technology, Pure Video HD technology, OpenGL 4 support, and two dual link DVI connectors with X cool switch for extreme overclocking mode. According to EVGA's website, extreme overclockers Vince Kingpad and Tien are not satisfied with the overclocking capabilities of current gen graphics cards, so they work together with EVGA to create the EVGA GTX 580 classified. It has a 14 plus 3 phase power design that can deliver over a thousand watts of power and a redesigned coolant with an 8 centimeter fan to improve coolant efficiency as much as 30 percent compared to the standard cooler. Taking a look at the card we can see the 8 centimeter blower style fan here with the GeForce classified logo printed on the plastic shroud. The PCI Express 2.0 bus right here and if we pick the card up we can see the focus, the two dual link DVI connectors, along with another connector here that I am not quite familiar with, with uh, the card of this age. As we can see, the blower style cooler is very large with a large heat sink on it. Um, pretty much just, pretty much just pure metal contacting the VRMs and the GPU dot. Um, a few more connectors up here, which I will assume are probably for LN2 uh, overclocking to monitor voltages on the core, the VRM, and the RAM. Um, we can also see here that we have dual 8-pin PCI Express connectors and one 6-pin PCI Express connector to deliver up to 1,000 watts of power per EVGA. If we look on the back of the card here, we can see there is plenty of PCB. We can see the GPU die right there. And pretty much what we're going to do now is we're going to tear this car down and see just how much dirt and dust is inside of it and take a look at the other side of this card to see all the sexiness of the 580 classified that it was roughly nine years ago.
we're going to take a look at the bare card here with no heat sink, no fan, no thermal pads on the VRMs or the memory here. Um, you can see that there are a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 memory chips, all 256 megabytes apiece to give you your 3 gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM. You can see your two SLI fingers that are no longer used today on the newer graphics cards such as the 2000 series like 2060, 2070, 2080, 2060 Super, so on and so forth. Um, you can see here that we have the 14 plus three phase power design um, with one of the faces actually being on the back of the card here. Um, and this is such a large GF110 die. I don't believe the dies are uh, quite this big on most modern cards. I believe the 2080 um, has a huge die like this, but there is no actual heat spreader on the dies anymore. Um, this is actually direct die on the newer cards, and I think it has been for a while now. Um, we can also get a better view of all of the power delivery coming from this side of the card coming from the two 8-pin and single 6-pin PCI Express power uh, adapters. Um, this is the fan plug right here, but I'm not sure what this plug is for. It is labeled J8 on the actual board. Um, and then there are three plugs right here, um, which have corresponding lights to them. I'm going to see if I can zoom you in on those. Bear with me. This is out. This is in. Let's see how well that is going to work. There you go. But you get your three plugs right here. And I believe these three uh, LEDs actually correspond with that. Um, they are labeled NVDD, FBVDD, and PEXVDD. Um, or NVDD for the first one. Um, I'm pretty sure those are used when a LN2 um, overclocking is taking place, hence why this card was co-designed with Kingpin um, for extreme overclocking. Um, so we're going to go ahead and zoom you back out now when that was in. We're going to get used to this eventually. Um, I was actually able to procure two of these cards. This card is actually not going to go back together. It is going to get uh, very well cleaned physically. Um, the heat sink, the uh, metal uh, mid plate is going to get cleaned very well. Um, the fans going to get cleaned very well. And this card is going to kind of be a showpiece. Um, the second card is going to get cleaned and disassembled just like this one. But the second card is going to be cleaned, have new thermal paste and thermal pads replaced. Um, and I'm going to see if I can get a system of the era to actually test this 580 classified in. And if I feel so inclined to, I may put this one back together and we may do an SLI video at some point. Um, but this is just a brief teardown of the GTX 580 classified. And before I sign off, I um, want to get the vapor chamber cooler in here as well. Um, this is just a big meaty cooler right here. Um, Plenty of aluminum fans here, fins here, um, going across. But then you have this pure thick piece of copper with one copper heat pipe and the vapor chamber cooler right here um, to keep this uh, GF110 die cool. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this was the top of the line GTX 580 made. Um, there may have been a few more that were very similar to this one where um, it was designed by Kingpin for extreme overclocking, liquid nitrogen, and so forth. Um, but thank you for tuning in. This is Anthony from Tech Talk with Tony. Hope you enjoyed it.